Hey folks, time for another Q&A. Now the premise, in case you don't know, for all of these Q&As is the fact that Earth is going through a geomagnetic excursion, right about the time that the Sun's super flare cycle is about to reset. Not two good things to be having happen at once. We could be thrown back to the Stone Age. But one of the things we get asked all the time, and this will be our first question, how bad is this event going to be? Well, the answer is not as bad as the last one, not as bad as Le Champ 40 something thousand years ago, not as bad as Toba 70 something thousand years ago. What we do know from the geologic record is, yes, there are major climate shifts, volcanoes, earthquakes, every single time this 12,000 year cycle rolls around. Yes, there are major biosphere hits, major extinctions of species. However, we have never had two atrocious cycles in a row. Toba was really bad 70-something thousand years ago. The Vostok slash Greenland Sea event was not as bad. Le Champ was very bad. Mono Lake and Lake Mungo were not. The last one was Gothenburg during the Younger Dryas, and that one was really bad. Chances are this one is not going to be as bad. And as I mentioned in a previous Q&A, the worst one we have seen in the last 100,000 years, only 4% of the species were lost maybe even a little less because we don't have all of the data and information surrounding that. But this event should not be as bad. The notion that we can't survive, there's nothing we can do, throw that out the window right away. Every single instance we see of civilization surviving these last couple, they all seem to prepare. They all seem to know it was coming and know that they needed to have certain things in place, uh, such as a place to hide underground, things like that. And so Try not to be too discouraged and be encouraged by the fact that the last one was really bad and this one probably will not be as bad. Which areas of the world are going to be hit the worst? This usually happens on the side of the earth where the solar flash occurs and then wherever that blast from the sun actually hits somewhere between 15 to 25 hours later. And what's interesting is it does not appear to be random. It appears to be hitting almost like clockwork and moving around the earth. Now, the last time, the two hardest hit areas were Western Asia and the Americas. Before that, it was uh, the Atlantic Ocean, Greenland, parts of Antarctica, and areas like Australia, Oceania, New Zealand, uh, Fiji, Tonga, things like that. When you look and you see how it's going, it's not that hard to see that the next areas that should actually take the worst of it are the longitudes with Europe and Africa, and then again, the West Pacific, which would be Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, Tonga, those areas there, uh, perhaps even Hawaii as well. Uh, and so there's not a good explanation for this. So many times it is more uh, clear what the patterns are observationally and in the geologic evidence than it is explaining the mechanistic action behind it. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't tell you why it appears to be hitting the earth and sort of moving around like clockwork every time, but the Americas were hit worst the last time. And one of the other things we know in it, playing back on the previous question, no area that's hit hardest in one cycle is hit hardest in the next cycle. And so that would uh, sort of put the Americas uh, as a good place to be. Next question, how deep underground do you need to be for various aspects of this? And the answer is uh, obviously dependent on what's above you in the ground. For example, if you are uh, just beneath some dirt, it's different than if you are beneath some rock. Um, if you, for example, have something uh, underneath ice, uh, that presents different challenges climatologically, but ice basically is one of the best cosmic ray deflectors and protectors that there is. And don't forget, another thing we mentioned in a previous Q&A, it is not like you're going to have to spend years underground. The underground portion is really just for if the solar flash happens above your head, if all of a sudden the sun is becoming bright white, you uh, so bright that you can't even open your eyes outside, your skin is burning in moments, that kind of thing, get indoors or get underground. Uh, for when the wind, lightning, and hail come, that is really going to be the most prominent 
situation for when you need some kind of shelter like that. Also, uh, if there are extreme temperature swings, say it's, uh, you know, negative 20, negative 30 degrees in an area where you're used to it being much more moderate. Those are the instances. And when it comes to something like that, insulation is almost more important than how deep you are underground, or at least as important. And so it's not necessarily how deep underground you need to be. You just need to be protected in some way. Even something, you know, just barely underground can be very beneficial. Got a question about surviving on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Um, I do not love that idea. It is true that being on a boat in the middle of the ocean would probably be better than standing on a beach, simply because of the waves and the fact that the waves and the cyclical deluge, the continental scale tsunamis that occur, do get worse at the coastline. As with every tsunami we've ever seen, you know, it is a certain height out at sea and then it slows down and gets taller at the coastline. But don't forget, there are these things called rogue waves. Rogue waves are already uh, an issue. There are waves on the sea that are already pretty, pretty scary. And when it comes to the sloshing around, um, especially with the earthquakes, the volcanoes, land rising and falling, I just can't even imagine what you're going to see out there if you're in the middle of the Pacific, the middle of the Atlantic, something like that. And so um, there are certainly worse places to be than the middle of the ocean on a sturdy, solid, big boat. Um, but there are certainly better places to be as well. Last question we're going to do today. Has the government ever attempted to shut me up? Uh, I get this one in various forms. Like, have you ever been visited by men in black suits? Have you ever received a letter from this or that? Uh, the closest I've ever come to that is a couple of years ago, I got a letter uh, from the Department of Homeland Security saying that my sharing of U.S. Uh, government images and things like that uh, subject me to export controls. I have no idea what that actually means. I've never seen any tangible effects from that. But in terms of the government coming and trying to shut me up, no, absolutely not. And it's because we're kind of a fringe thought process or fringe group anyway. Just sort of let them go be over there. Not many people are listening. If they were to, you know, Alex Jones me, deplatform me or take me out, there's 600,000 of you. That's going to be news. You, that would actually be antithetical to the idea of shutting me up and shutting down this information. Uh, it truly does seem that there's a combination of, one, they're not thinking that this is much of a problem, not going to catch on on a global scale. And then also don't forget, for every single elite that wants depopulation, that seems to hate the rest of us, there's another one of them who thinks they're Batman with a messianic complex and genuinely believes in karma and things like that and thinks that they're going to save something or save tons of people. And I would say I have seen more evidence than I would have ever imagined that observers in general have friends at YouTube, that we have friends in the government. I can tell you that it's not just NASA scientists and professors I interact with. I have talked with congressmen. There are observers in the Pentagon. There are observers uh, in the House. There are observers in DOE, DOD, everywhere. They do know this is coming and there's not this oppositional or antagonistic mindset towards the group as some of you think. Now, sure, that exists among some people, but um, I would say more so the trolls on the internet than anything else. Anyway, good to answer your questions. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.